What is going on, fellow Marvel Strike Force players? I don't know if you guys are as tired of seeing that advertisement as I am, but I'm quite tired of seeing that advertisement. I've been working on a new format for learning these new characters where I play them over on twitch.tv forward slash Kevin M. Cologne, uh, along with off stream for a whole week. But if you'd like to uh, play me and watch me figure out these characters and prep them for these guys and get a little behind the scenes understanding of what the learning process is, feel free to tune in, give your boys some work, help me figure it out so I can get these guys out to players who need it. Uh, we're talking about Berserker Baraka this week. This video is, of course, again, assuming that you've already seen my Marauder video where I explain Baraka's fundamentals. So if you haven't seen that, I would click on the info card up above, on one of these sides of the screen, and uh, check that video out, and then come back here and let's learn about Berserker. But while we're talking about it, what do you have access to in Berserker? Well, here we are. Let's find out. Let's show you a little bit. The, there's a big debate between Baraka's variations and how strong they are, um, usually between whether or not Marauder is stronger than Bone Picker or Bone Picker is stronger than Marauder, but it's usually universally accepted that Berserker is the harder variation to use uh, because of the damage fall off that it has. Marauder gives you giant access to damage all over the screen for 40% all of the time, up to 50 if you get people in the corner and it just gets ridiculous. Um, Bone Picker allows you to shut people down. It's a great counterpicking move. It's one of the best anti-airs in the game. You get full stream stream uh, screen. You get full screen control and relentless pressure over your opponent. You make them hesitate to press a button. Berserker has its strengths and its weaknesses. And one of its biggest weaknesses is that you lose access to a lot of the big damage that you get in Bone Picker and Marauder. Obviously, Marauder with the best Bone Picker, very very close second. If you can set your opponent up. Uh, to get hit with some of the combos in that. I'll be going over that soon because Bone Picker I'm going to pick up right after this. Um, but in the meantime, we're talking about Berserker. What you do gain access to in Berserker, one of your pros is that you gain access to 50-50s, and they're pretty strong 50-50s, even though they don't lead into big damage, but they're a constant threat for your opponent. Uh, you have this back forward four, which is your leg kebab. You see it's, got, it's a little slow on startup, but obviously if you combo into it, it combos very easily, very nicely. And this is a low. It can also be amplified. Sorry, I didn't want to show you that yet. It can be amplified or damage. And you get to choose what side your opponent goes on. And this is going to be a universal strength you're going to have with all of your moves in Berserker is that you have constant dictation over what side of the screen you want your opponent to land on if you do manage to confirm a hit. Um, all of, well not all of, but most of his special moves are going to give you the ability to side switch your opponent if you want or leave them in front of you if you already have their back to the wall. And that's honestly to me the biggest strength of this variation outside of a short burst of unbreakable damage which we'll go over in a second. But uh, yeah, obviously back 3-1-2 normally ends in an overhead so back 3-1 back 4-4 turns it into a 50-50 mix up whether they're going to eat the overhead or the low and both options are safe um, or at least relatively safe. We go back three here, we're minus six, so we're safe. We do back forward four, we're minus seven, so we're safe. Uh, again, it's not your turn off of any of these, but you can go for whatever you think the mix-up is, and you're not going to get punished in either one. And you see the pushback on this mix-up is pretty strong. So even somebody who has like a seven frame down one, if they somehow had the best timing in the game and could break numbers and make that punish you, still wouldn't be within range. You do lose access to your uh, Tarkatan Blade. If you've seen the Marauder video, you know that uh, normally you can hold down forward one with Baraka and his blade will extend out of his arms for his pokes and for his jump in one. In Berserker, you don't have that. So you don't get that increased range to annoy people. You really have to get in and start trying to abuse these 50-50s. That's going to be a majority of your game plan. Uh, another strong 50-50 that you have is a crushing, throw, a crushing blow threat off of your 1-2-2, two, two, which normally would end in this overhead. Of course, a lot of people are very aware of the string already, so they're gonna do this on reaction, come to stand block, and when they go for that, you go for the back forward four. And you see your one, two, two, safe if they eat the whole thing, your back forward four, safe. So if they're content with just blocking your mix-ups, your buttons are pretty solid, you're not gonna get punished for much. You see buttons like this, like even this is only minus eight, but we're two on its own is minus nine, so this is punishable, but you're never gonna do that. You can finish the string out and you're safe. You're plus, and you have pushback. Um, so Baraka, of course, has always been solid with his buttons. Kind of similar to uh, Jackie and Cetrion characters like that as far as you can go for most of your normals and not be punishable uh, throughout any 
facet of them and that's mostly because it's going to be hard to open your opponent up so the game almost in a sense doesn't want to punish you for trying to test out how to fish your opponent to stop blocking or to get caught with something so you're not going to be super punishable unless you go for like an unamplified blade spark or something where you're sitting there and you know the risk you're taking when you do that because you're supposed to amplify it for the pushback to keep yourself relatively safe against most characters of course Jackie, Liu Kang, all of those, like, I am my projectile characters will be able to punish that. Um, some characters, depending on their range, Nightwolf can get in with forward one and stuff, so you want to be careful with these. Um, I've relied a lot more on doing down four into something like this for the increased pushback. You see, we're basically back at neutral range, and I'm only minus 11 here, because the farther away you are in a projectile, the safer you are. Forward two, one leaves you too close. So I don't like using that. It's I've mostly been trying to... Almost like if you, if any of you play Street Fighter, almost a Street Fighter strategy with the crouching medium kick fireball, I'm almost doing that with this. The the farther away I can hit the crouching kick, the safer I'll be off of the amplified projectile. I'm a little too far. But up to minus 11, and of course the farther away you get, the safer you get. Um, so yeah, you have these mix-ups off of back four four, those are going to be great. One of the reasons that they're very important is because you get a crushing blow condition off of back forward four that you should have seen already because I messed up. If your opponent is block, if they're stand blocking when you go for this move and you amplify, you get this crushing blow. So that's mostly the threat. Now you see the damage is low, it only does 20%, but what we're really trying to look at is the dot damage that is given to your opponent afterwards. So you'll see now Shiva is bleeding like a mofo and it's not even her time of the week, but she lost about the last 10% of damage in their two dot damage. So. Uh, end game landing this with your opponent in the corner is like the ideal way that you would try to go for it if you could uh, You can imagine Putting your opponent in a position like this where you have them here. They're very close to death Let's okay. I could I could just set her health if I was smart We'll just set her to about 30 where like right where she's about in crushing blow range or right before it I say like right before it just because I hate fatal blows uh, You land this Watch the dot damage that she's going to take. And I'm going to be pressuring this whole time with my buttons. She's down to almost last breath. So you pressure, you get, uh, you chip her with things. You see, I'm gonna get her down. I'm gonna switch her over to block. Now she's taking this dot damage. I'm just adding to it with everything she chooses to eat. That's game. So it can help a lot in situations like that where you wanna just kind of get your opponent to fear the move you know so it's one of those where you go for it when you can get it but ideally you're gonna try to save it if you can save it for an end game like that but it, with these kind of games you go for it when you can and that's the same thing here when you go for one two mix up if they're blocking you have a uh, double crushing blow mix up because you're betting that you're either gonna do for, go for this if they try to punish of course if they're just blocking it's fine, but if they're trying to like down poke you or something, you know, mo most times you're just gonna hit them. Um, but if they do stand block, there's your crushing. And you get in and you keep chipping and you keep chipping. So chip damage is gonna be really important in this. Um, and then of course, as we mentioned before, the ability to switch sides. It's just gonna be incredibly strong. To toss her wherever you want or to get in with this. And just throw her forward if you can. Uh, your big damage go-to if you're doing a combo ender because you don't have any natural launcher in Berserker. It's not like Marauder where your back forward four would launch them up. And uh, in this variation, all you're doing is uh, trying to get short bursts of unbreakable damage. And you'll see most of the combos, even including these back forward combos, she never comes off the floor. So these are all uh, guaranteed damage if she gets hit. But if you're going for hit confirm straight into damage and you're not trying to waste your crushing blow, back forward three is going to be your go-to. Uh, it's unsafe if it's not amplified so if she does block the whole thing you are minus 14 if you do amplify it you make it safe but if you amplify it there is a flawless block gap i'm gonna see if i can actually showcase it here if i control player two and then record the ai i don't know how good my timing on this is gonna be oh no sorry i, I messed up i'm supposed to do the uh the non no the amplify yeah i didn't mess up all right, let's see if I got these. Hold on. Well, you see, I got a flawless block on there. I wasn't ready. I didn't believe in it. So they can flawless block you on that. And you're going to want to be aware of that. It's important that you know. 
Um, if you're playing somebody who doesn't have flawless blocks, this is one of the good moves to test whether or not they have those. If they don't have those, uh, just amplify it all the time and keep yourself safe. If they do have flawless blocks and you read they're going to go for it, um, not amplifying it will actually punish them for trying to flawless block because there is no gap they'll let go and get hit. So that's kind of the way that you deal with the 50-50 of higher level players who are going to try to flawless block that special move that dissuade you from doing it is making them think about whether or not they want to flawless block it and then if they hesitate and you do amplify you keep yourself safe and they get upset that they didn't go for the opportunity so that is important to keep note for um i'm gonna set her back here the other thing with it is this is another move where you could dictate what side they go and all of this is just by holding back or not holding back or you can hold forward if it's better for you i do that even though it doesn't matter obviously if you just let a move like this rip they're gonna go forward so it's back forward four and then hold back you'll switch sides back forward three hold back you'll switch sides so this is a good uh, get me out of the corner and you into the corner tool if i'm here and i catch her now she's in the corner and now I can start all of my stuff. I can start pressuring, getting in with buttons, trying to chip, trying to confirm into this. Oh, cool, she got caught, and then we just end up in this whole situation again. Um, so that's going to be the big benefit for you there as far as side switching. And you also have back forward two, which is going to be your kind of uh, quick punish tool. You see, it gets in pretty fast, and you would be surprised how many moves, like... Uh, let's say like a Shang Tsung does ground eruption and you block ground eruption, you can get in with this. And so it's similar to like a Jackie back forward two, a Liu Kang back forward three. Uh, you know, the two moves that I always reference in those situations, a Shao Kahn shoulder charge, if you will, in certain situations. This is your getting tool and it also lets you side switch. And you don't even have to amplify to do that. You can just side switch or punch them forward. This move now also acts as your armor break. Uh, this is back forward two if I forgot to say I'm losing track of myself. So if... We set the AI. I'm going to do delayed breakaway just to not have to try so hard. We catch her with this. She wants to break away. Just hold the two. And do that. And if I can find a clip, I did this on stream to somebody. And it, it was as threatening as it looked when you make the read. So this is your, I, I know you're going to try to break away um, move. So it's a pretty strong move for that. The crushing blow conditions on its own, I actually forget because I almost never get it. Yeah, if they block late. So the, the biggest block late tactic you're going to have is, uh, you know, when you're, you know how everybody loves this game now in Mortal Kombat where you go for a poke and you go into one of your specials because your opponent's going to try to get their turn back. Um, down four into this is usually the way you're going to get a late block on it. Something like that or down one into it where they try to take their turn back. They realize something is happening. They try to block off of reaction because they see this big meaty Wolverine Mortal Kombat character charging in at them and they want to defend themselves but they do it too late. Um, but uh, ideally, most of the times that I've gotten it, it's been for armor breaking. And, and it's, it's rare to get it outside of that. Uh, but it is a good get in tool. It's a good side switch tool. Again, toss them to the side. So you'll see here back forward three, toss her back, uh, back forward four, amplify it, toss her back, back forward two, toss her back. So all of them. Uh, have great ability to just control where your opponent ends up on the screen even if you don't amplify I mean not amplify if you don't side switch because you want to continue to push them forward all of these moves push your opponent a decent amount forward outside of back forward four uh, back forward four on its own leads into dot damage if you don't amplify it I forgot to mention so it's good for that and your plus off of it. you'll see on hit we are plus five we're right in range for a back four if you don't wait so long if you kind of just mash it out You'll catch them right before they're out of range of it. So this is how you can try to uh, enforce that your opponent isn't going to eat this and press buttons. They'll at least want to block the sweep. Of course, at some point, they'll start jumping over. You'll try to anti-air when they do that. Um, it won't be as effective as Bone Picker, but you're down two. You know, Baraka has one of those down twos. Look at the range on it. Look how far that goes. So if they do try to jump over your down four, and you don't have the best anti-air, then you see that you can just let this move rip, and you'll be pretty much fine. Um, outside of that, as I was mentioning before, you do have incredible unbreakable damage because you never take your opponent off the floor. Back forward three is going to make sure of that. And by the time you amplify and stick them in the move, they of course can't break away a move that's already happening. So something like this. It's not the biggest damage in the game, but we pushed her incredibly far. You'll see it again. The, the damage is the same regardless and we can either throw her away and get our 286 for side switch. Or we can just not press anything and throw her forward and get our 286. And look how much closer to the corner she's gotten. We're mid-screen here. 
I'm getting in with a very basic combo. It's not at all hard to execute. And now she is this close to the corner. So that's going to be very strong for that. Your back forward two can work the same way, but ideally, if you're in a situation like this, um, why not go for the back forward three for damage? Ideally, anytime you're going for damage, back forward three. Anytime you're calling an armor break or something, or let's say they, uh, they wake up with fatal blow and they whiff completely, you can, uh, you can punish that with this, uh, depending on how long their fatal blow is. Let me actually try to see if I can show you that. This, if I skip past this, it's because it didn't go well. Um, just going to try to record her going for that. No, that's not... Because I want it on armor break. Okay, it's not it's not the best example with her. But you can do it on other characters. It will uh, armor break. If they're doing fatal... It'll be easier for somebody like Scarlet, where she's mostly in place if she shoots for it too far. But yeah, I tried. I tried. It's it's situational. I did... You know, I picked Shiva for the lore of training mode. Uh, because this is where the fight... Ha uh, no, no spoilers! No spoilers. If you haven't played Aftermath by now, what are you doing, though? You know? But there's better examples. Uh, I'll try to show you some other time when I get into uh, more tech videos. Because I'm planning on releasing some tech videos per character in the future. Let me know if there's tech with characters you want to see. Like everybody who's been asking me about 422 with Jackie. I'll explain it. I'll explain it. Um, but yeah, big unbreakable damage and the ability to slide switch. And 50-50s that lead into crushing blows or lead into crushing blows. That's mostly what Berserker has access to. It's pretty simple. There's not a lot of uh, complex stuff to go into. You can obviously get more damage off of things in the corner, but that's like doing damage off of jumping fours, uh, which is the same way it is in other variations, you know. I'll do the easier version. Oh my god, you, you would think when I go to do the easier version, I would do it. That's doing things like this for a little bit more damage. They're, they're not necessarily like ideal. Of course, you can get flag out and do the same thing to really like max. To really maximize that damage um but that's depends on your ability to get flag out oh also if you land back forward four i'm the king of just like forgetting about things until the last minute if you do manage to land back forward four uh for crushing blow because you turn your easy crushing blows on and you set your ai to break away like you want to to make this point get your uh Get your crushing blow off of that too, if they decide to, because of course you can cancel off of this. If you don't think they're gonna break away, you can go into back forward three, so if I was confident that they're gonna eat it, or they don't have defensive meter, you can just let this rip. It's still decent damage. Uh, it's not as much as you want, but it is what it is. The fact that you're keeping them on the ground the whole time means that you're getting more damage than you would normally, because ideally they're not going to break away from a lot of things because your damage threat isn't as serious. But when you start getting crushing blows and you start getting setups on them with dot damage and then they guess wrong on a mix up and you get this in and this starts doing dot damage and you're coming in and you're doing all of this fun stuff. Eventually when they get launched or something or when you do get a big crushing blow opportunity, they're going to spend the breakaway because they don't want to deal with it. Um, so it's, it's easy to bait your opponent into spending defensive meter the few times that you do actually manage to juggle them because you never do. Um, there was something else. Oh, yes. The last thing I wanted to say, um, the big threat with this variation. Also, make sure that you keep your opponent scared of your throw crushing blows. Don't forget that you have these. Uh, from my experience, it's helped a lot to fish for these, mostly in this variation. Of course, it's scary in Marauder. It's scary in Bone Picker. Throw, escape, fail crushing blows are scary for any character that has them. Um, but they're very important in Marauder because... I'm mean, not in Marauder. Yeah, in Berserker. Because when you're trying to threaten your opponent with the threat of I'm going to land a crushing blow all the time that you're not ready for, the throw is one of them. So uh, big comebacks in this variation have come off of, uh, you know, let's say, uh, let me put her back on breakaway. Let's say like, you know, we're playing, she goes for a throw. I'm down on life and she goes for a throw. I catch her with this. She fears the comeback, so she breakaway. Uh, I do this. Uh, I get in on her, she's blocking, she's blocking, I land this mix-up. Now she's eating dot damage. She's scared, she's turtling, I land this throw. You know, it's sequences like that can end matches very quick. 
um, but you're going to need to be able to put the fear into your opponent and make them actually scared of you. Make your opponent fear you. That's all going to rely on your timing, uh, your fundamentals, your ability to dictate range, your ability to pressure, uh, how good you are with shimmying, uh, all of that. You're going to need strong fundamental skills to make Berserker work to full effect, but it has some stuff in it. I, I was not really confident in the variation when I started learning it, but the more time I gave it, the more I enjoyed it. So I would urge you, if you play Baraka, to look into this. If you, if you play Baraka, I'm sure you've looked into it already, but if you've uh, shit on it, give it another chance and see. If you feel confident in your ability to land those crushing blows and make right reads on your opponent, which you don't even need to do because you're safe generally all of the time, Berserker might be the variation for you, but outside of that, that's going to be my time for now. I'm going to have more guides coming soon, along with a combo guide for Marauder, because I recorded it already, and I just am too lazy to edit it together. So if that's not the next video that I upload, call me Dinky McDinkerson in the comment sections of whatever next video I post. Uh, keep playing Mortal Kombat 11, guys. Stop by the stream if you want to say hello. Uh, you know, comment your thoughts down below. There, there's been a plentiful amount of people who have commented things I've forgotten in these guides. Please do that. I'm actually very happy when you guys do that because I'm posting these videos to help players get better. So if there's something with Berserker I didn't mention and you know it, let me know so we can all learn together. Um, and we'll continue. Thanks. It's always an automobile outside my window, you know what I'm saying? Thank you guys for tuning in and checking this out. I'll see you with some more Mortal Kombat content very soon. I love you all. Peace.